a cult classic beloved by its legions of devoted fans, Veronica Mars put a fresh spin on the TV mystery genre. Former young adult novel author Rob Thomas created the show, a modern day combination of noir and Nancy Drew, and it ran for three seasons on UPN and the CW. Years later, the show would be resurrected as a successfully crowdfunded movie. Let's explore the real reasons why Veronica Mars was canceled. Low ratings. Television networks are businesses, and low-rated shows tend to be poor investments. Yeah, I want to both. This serves as a preemptive apology for the conversation that's about to take place. In its first season back in fall of 2004, Veronica Mars ranked a dismal 148 out of 156 total shows. It ticked up a bit to 145 in its second season, and 138 in its third and final year. All the while, total viewership held steady at about 2.5 million viewers. Ta-da! Said CW Entertainment President Don Ostrov at a TV industry event shortly after the cancellation, We really tried every single year to bring in more viewers, and we just weren't able to crack it. Maybe that's true, but the network didn't do Veronica Mars any favors by scheduling it against Fox's American Idol at the peak of its popularity. That is slightly disturbing. Tough fit with the CW. In 2006, the two struggling networks, the WB and UPN, merged into a new network called the CW, which became Veronica Mars' new home. This face, right here, my over-the-moon face. Sadly, despite surviving the merger, it wasn't an easy fit. Even though CW corporate sibling Warner Brothers Studios produced Veronica Mars, it was canceled because it couldn't draw in new viewers. So are you going to tell me why I'm here, or should I just sit back and enjoy your impression of a mildly constipated David Caruso? That's because the CW was going after a couple of very specific audience niches. And Veronica Mars, a difficult-to-categorize show that was a little funny and a little dramatic, didn't fit in with the vampires and superheroes. Ahead of its time. Veronica Mars ran on broadcast TV just before the so-called second golden age of television, and before streaming services opened up new opportunities for quirkier shows like the kind Rob Thomas creates. Before shows like Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones found accolades for their intricate plotting that required viewers to pay close attention and watch every episode, TV shows that dared to be innovative, cinematic, and complicated were often critically acclaimed but commercially ignored. Veronica Mars aired around the same time as Arrested Development, another show that pulled in a small but devoted audience of fans who appreciated precision. Cuckoo ka cha! Cuckoo ka cha! What are you doing? Michael yeah. and women? A cuckoo ka cha! That's what I was just telling you! No reboot. While Veronica Mars was still in the air, some CW executives asked Thomas to write a show about rookie cops. He countered with the idea of making the fourth season of Veronica Mars jump forward in time to show Veronica in her first year as an FBI agent, and they produced a pilot presentation, a mini-episode about 12 minutes long. While well received by the CW brass, the reboot wasn't meant to be. Thomas explained in an interview that he thinks CBS president Les Moonves killed it. We went from dead to back on the air to dead again very quickly. Our Hail Mary pass came very close to working, but didn't quite get past all the filters it needed to. Moving on. Probably seeing the writing on the wall, Thomas had already secured his next gig by the time the series was wrapping up its third season. Now those days are over and it's time to move on. He was hired on as a writer and producer for ABC's Misguided, a sitcom starring Judy Greer as a high school guidance counselor. Thomas was quickly promoted to showrunner and executive producer, but left the series after only a few weeks due to creative differences. Misguided was ultimately a mid-season replacement that aired only seven episodes in the spring of 2008, freeing up Greer to move on to better things. Resurrection Veronica Mars' hardcore fans couldn't let go, and neither could the show's talent. For years after the cancellation, Rob Thomas and star Kristen Bell mentioned the possibility of a movie in interviews. It seemed like a long shot for a studio to finance a big screen version of a show very few people watched. When are we gonna do this whole Veronica Mars movie, huh? I don't know, you got a couple of million dollars lying around? But then along came Kickstarter. In March 2013, Thomas launched a campaign to finance the movie directly from fans. Within 30 days, the project had collected an astonishing $5.7 million. Wait for it. Oh! Yeah! I love all 91,000 of you. From the whole cast, thank you so very, very much. Thomas took a screenplay and his Kickstarter money to Warner Brothers, and the studio kicked in a few more million to get the movie made. It was released to theaters and to video on demand platforms in March 2014. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know what you love the most about Veronica Mars.